All right, so this is a group for all people. And this talk is about why it's important to have user groups for minority people in tech and gaming. I'm Jennifer Konikowski at Oboe Squeaks on Twitter, jenlovesaweb.com, and I run Pi Ladies Boston, which is a group for women and genderqueer individuals who either program in Python or even want to learn Python. We're equal opportunity. Um, I'm Adrian, aka Generic Adriel. I'm a local video game developer, and I run Women in Games, which is, um, I mean, it's women focused, but it's an entirely inclusive group. So. Okay. So, whether you're part of the majority or minority, you might be thinking. So, I don't agree with the idea of exclusive groups. And throughout this talk, we're going to discuss why minority focus groups are so important to increasing overall diversity in main user groups. And first, for those for those of you who haven't had the experience of being a minority, especially a visible minority in a room, I'm going to try and do my best to sort of describe how it can feel and some of the reactions you might get. So everyone's life experiences are a little bit different, obviously. But when you're a different gender, sex, race, or orientation, the differences tend to be amplified. And in conversation, it can feel like others aren't necessarily interested in your particular experiences, or you, you feel like you don't have anything in common with anyone else because you don't look like it. You're like, you know, I'm I'm not a mom, or I'm I'm not a guy, and this often has nothing to do with how others are behaving. You know, sometimes it can, but a lot of times everyone can be perfectly friendly and be attempting to be as welcoming as possible, as possible, and it's just a feeling you have of just not belonging. So, and with that feeling can often come less confidence because I feel like everyone else all sort of looks the same and so they probably all know what they're talking about, but you know, I'm sort of like the outsider and that's gonna make me less likely to speak up. But, and the other part is feeling like you might be representing your group. Like if I am in a programming group that's all men, which I've definitely been in before and I'm the only woman, I'm less likely to want to ask a question because it seems like, oh, well, the only woman doesn't know what's going on. Way to go, ladies, don't come back. You know, even though that's not necessarily how they feel, that's how I feel that they're going to think. And that sometimes has no bearing on reality. You know, it's all about how it seems. So you don't, you're, you don't want to say something that might be considered unintelligent. And that leads to, oftentimes, you, people, when you look different, people will think, oh, like, she's just there with her husband or her boyfriend. You know, she, oh, that's so cute does no programming. I'll just explain this to her. And yeah, they just assume you don't have the same level of knowledge that they do. And again, it's m the more visibly you stand out, um, this, this just compounds and gets worse. So it can lead to people speaking to you in a very condescending way. But again, it can often be completely unintentional. Like, you, like they might I'll use myself as an example. See me and think, oh, you know, maybe she's lost. I'll see if she needs any help. You know, and trying to be totally friendly and welcoming, and it just makes me feel more out of place. Which again, there's sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. So that's what being different does. It makes you aware of your actions and that you might be imposing. It's so minor, but it does add up. And this is by Ellen Chisa, who was a product manager at Kickstarter and one of the very few women in her department. In the post she quoted, she talks about her coworkers, mostly young dads, inviting her out to lunch and working hard to include her, but she still felt like she was intruding on, on their conversations, you know, most of which were about being young dads. So now at this point, you might be thinking, but why would you want to exclude me from your group? I am an awesome ally, and I want to work to increase diversity in my field. So generally, 
it's not that any of these groups really actively want to exclude. You know, maybe they just want a smaller community because a lot of us, you know, want to talk about our shared experience in the field. For example, like I'll use myself as an example of being a woman in a majority male programming environment. And a lot of groups are actually open to friends and allies. But if a group isn't, it's not because they don't like you or don't want allies. They might just want the smaller space. And a lot of us, if you're a minority, you rarely interact with other minorities in your field. So in my case, Pi Ladies is my monthly opportunity to hang out with a bunch of nerdy ladies. And I think it's important to note that most people who go to these groups also go to the main group. So the more people you get in these smaller groups, a lot of times increases the diversity in the larger group, in this case, like Boston Python. So it turns out that communities exist for a variety of reasons, some of which have nothing to do with explaining themselves, a cause, technology, or a gender to the rest of the world. This is by Selena Deckelman, who's one of the organizers of Pileys Portland. And she wrote this in response to the question, why are there so many women in tech groups? Groups can celebrate our similarities, but they can also sort of celebrate ways in which we're different. So why does the majority have problems with such outreach programs? We don't get it. And why don't we get it? Because most of us haven't ever been in the shoes of a minority, and virtually none of us has to endure their fate every day. So Heineck is a software engineer, and his initial reaction to minority exclusive groups was that they divided the community. However, in the post, which I linked all these like at the end, by the way, he describes how he came to realize that they didn't divide, but helped grow the community and increase diversity. And I have to say, it's a little, the end sounds a little dire, because a lot of us, you know, it's actually, we do work in pleasant work environments, and we're not necessarily always actively being discriminated against. Because I don't want to, I never want to make it sound that way. But in the cases that we are, it's nice to be in a smaller group where we feel safe to talk about it. So, okay, now you're like, I'm sold. How can I be a good ally to these super great groups? <clears throat> well, if you're told that you aren't welcome in a space, please respect that. Don't argue with the organizers, don't demand a reason. Even if you can't attend events, that doesn't mean you can't help. Take time to listen to your friends and emphasize when they tell you about issues they may be having. Ask them how you can help and actually listen and follow through to the best of your ability. The best thing you can do to help is by spreading the word to people who may be interested in joining the community. If you run an organization with a similar focus, provide a way for the organizers to promote their group. It might be through the mailing list. You might just give them time at the beginning of each meeting to promote their group. So you don't feel like you fit into the existing groups. What can you do? Well, the obvious solution is start your own group. Um, once you've decided you want to start a group, you should figure out what your goal is. Do you want to create an inclusive group which fosters awareness among allies? Or do you want a group that's smaller and limited just to your target audience? Do you want to focus on technical talks? Do you want presentations about social issues? Do you just want a casual place to hang out without presentations? Discuss with your co-conspirators and... Sorry. <laughs> oh, and get feedback from your target audience. Find out what they're looking for and what environment they feel most comfortable in. One thing I absolutely want to stress is don't do it alone. With two of the communities I've run, I was the only person in charge, and I'm really, really bad at asking for help. Don't be me. Find someone or multiple someones with whom you mesh well, or at least be willing to reach out to the community. Obviously, working with other people can sometimes be bring conflict, but try to be flexible and willing to compromise. I run women in games with one other woman. Um, we mesh really well together, and it's just we, we bring different things to the table, and sometimes that's just really helpful. Sometimes it takes time to establish a community, and that's totally okay. Only you can decide whether it's worth it. But you should use all the resources available to you, whether it's social networking, talking to people involved with similar organizations, or just asking your friends to help spread the word. Also, be very open to feedback, because sometimes a lot of people will tell you, like, oh, that's great, I really want to attend, or, and they're, they're not, and you should find out why they're not coming. Um, once your group is active, it's really important to continue to foster a community among your members. So, for example, if you have a scheduled presentation, you should leave some time before and after where people can actually mingle and network. And 
it's really important to provide a way for your members to contact you privately if there's anything they feel unsafe or there's, they just have feedback. And you should make it a priority to address their concerns as truly as possible. The best way to accomplish this is usually through a mailing list or a mailing address that's specifically for this purpose. Um, ultimate goal should basically always to create a space where everybody feels safe and welcome. The last thing I want to touch on is the importance of finding space and setting a schedule. You should take your potential needs into consideration from the start. Do you want a private space? Do you need a large space? Do you want a small, intimate space? Do you want a bar where there's food available? Um, do you need an AV setup for presentations? Find, make finding a location and picking a meeting time a huge priority. And be consistent with the dates. This may mean the same day every month or a rotating schedule that's reasonably easy to remember or whatever other scheme works for you. Whatever you decide, you should be the one to make that decision. Asking your community to agree on a time is next to impossible. But if you tell them, like, you're meeting here at this time, they will show up. Oh, and if you do change the time and place, be very, very clear about this. Um, I ran into this issue recently. People are creatures of habit. They will show up the wrong place. Mm -hmm. So basically, I'm running an organization can be time consuming and stressful, but it's also incredibly rewarding. So thank you for listening. Ask any questions if you have any. Thank you.